Okay, so I have now just removed the stomach. And so as you can see, um, I also removed the omentum. So you can actually see your small intestine really well now. Um, and then you can also see that I removed the liver. So I've removed a couple organs here um, to be able to view them a little bit easier. So we're gonna start with the stomach first. And so this stomach was in here kind of like this. And so, oops, yep, that was cat food. Um, so at the top here, this is called the cardioesophageal sphincter. Um, and so a sphincter is what like, it kind of like opens and closes um, and it allows um, for food to come through, but then it also, it wants to close so that the food doesn't come back up. So I want you to think about um, when things come back up your esophagus and it burns, um, that's when your cardioesophageal sphincter is not working. Um, and that's gonna cause that possibly of you throwing up um, or that heartburn um, reaction due to the fact that acid's coming up. Uh, so here's your cardiac region. So that would be number one. Um, I also cut it open, so I'm holding it. This first curvature is called the fundic region. That's number two. Number three is the body. So this whole thing is called the body of the stomach. Uh, number four is the pyloric sphincter. So it also ends with the sphincter, which is right here. Um, this sphincter is going to be attached to a part of the small intestine, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, so I opened this up and you can see that the last meal it had was probably cat food because it's nice and round like the pebbles. So, yep. And I kind of been looking, I don't see any worms, so that's depressing, but um, maybe we'll find some in the small intestine. Inside here, you can see there's like these like folds. It's called the rouget. Um, it's kind of uh, what kind of like opens up your stomach to allow you to eat more. Your stomach can only hold a certain amount of food, but um, it starts off small, and then as you eat and more food fills the stomach, um, it expands out to a certain point. So that's what you'll see here is this one still had some, it still had some room, um, as you can tell. It's not a full stomach, I've seen fuller. So this is your stomach. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you the liver. So the liver is quite large and sometimes I think people get confused with the liver and the lungs. So I just kinda of wanna show you the difference, okay? There are lobes of the liver, it's just different than lobes of the lungs. Um, inside your liver, you're going to see this green object here which is called the gallbladder. Um, it is filled with bile, which is called, um, is connected to the common bile duct right here. So this is um, what's going to store, the gallbladder stores the bile, um, and then we kind of, then goes to the stomach and the small intestine to help um, digest the food. All right, this was, looks like a tongue. Um, it is your spleen, it's very large, and I'm gonna show you in comparison to the pancreas. So a lot of people get this confused. They say that this is the pancreas and this is the spleen. In a human, the pancreas is a lot larger and the spleen is smaller, so it's vice, it's opposite in a cat. Um, the one thing about the pancreas is when you're removing that omentum, a lot of times people don't realize that it's kind of connected to it, and so then they oftentimes remove it and then it's in the trash. So uh, sometimes I just kind of have to, um, in recent years or past years, we've had to ignore the pancreas unless um, you find it. Um, but yes, so these are the spleen, that's the pancreas. Um, and then now we're gonna get to the small intestine. Okay, so now I have um, just, made, like I've taken apart the small intestine and I'm gonna kind of point out something that one of the things that it asked was the mesentery. Um, people get this confused with the omentum. The mesentery is what's holding like all the small intestine into this big jumble. Um, so you have to cut the mesentery to make it into this necklace kind of thing that you see here. Um, so we're going to start at the top. The first, the small intestine has three sections um, and it's the same ones as a human. So um, at the top, so there's that sphincter here um, and you can kind of see that had some kind of stuff coming out or could be some liquid here. So this is your, um, this is the one that was connected to the stomach. So this is the pyloric sphincter. It's the bottom of that. Um, and so now we're going into the duodenum, okay? And when people ask me where does it transition, 
Uh, it's kind of like a guess. Um, so duodenum, and then we enter the jejunum. I will tell you that the duodenum and the jejunum are smaller than your ilium, and so that's why I would say like this last section would be your ilium. Um, and so I'm gonna go over the parts here and then I'll show you the inside. So the ilium is going to connect to the large intestine and it's going to be called the ileocecal sphincter. Okay, so it's going to be right here. I wish that I could say, I wish you could feel it <laughs> um, because you can feel where the sphincter is. And that's how you know you're transitioning from the small intestine to the large intestine. And so I know obviously none of you can feel it, so um, that's kind of pointless for me to say. But it's a little bit harder, um, and that's how I would know the difference. Um, now you're gonna look at the large intestine and be like, that looks really weird. It is a lot different than the hu um, human. The human is like laid out where you see the ascending, the transverse, the descending. Yeah, that's not how it is in the cat. Um, and it actually doesn't even have a cecum. Um, it's just connected to the ileocecal sphincter. So it starts with ascending, then goes to transverse, then descending, and then you have the sigmoid, and then it goes into the rectum. And so it's just one long line um, for the large intestine instead of it transitioning you know, across um, and down just like in the for the human. So I wanted to, and I gotta find it, I cut open the small intestine for you. Um, if you notice inside here, inside the small intestine you have villi, okay? And it kind of makes it look furry. If you guys can notice that here. Um, that furriness that contains the villi, that's going to be what's absorbing your nutrients, okay? And it's lined the entire way. So I continue down a little bit more and more villi. Um, very sad news, no worms. Not that I have found. That's just food turning into poop, sorry. Um, so I get down here to the large intestine and when I open it up, you notice that it's a lot smoother um, it doesn't contain the villi because inside your large intestine, that's not the point. It's to absorb water. Um, and so it's not absorbing the nutrients. So that is your small to large intestine. Now I want to kind of show you one more thing. So again, this is the bladder. Okay. So bladder is here and then you had your kidneys. And so I didn't remove those yet, but I can kind of do that right now. And they obviously are... They have that attachment point and I just kind of ripped it, that's okay. But small, okay, they're blue. This guy, someone, it's just fat. So some people have more fat than others. And then this is the other kidney here that's enclosed in a bunch of fat. So I can kind of be able to view that. So again, they're small. Um, every cat's different in the, some years they're bigger, some are um, more colored differently it just depends on the cat so this is dissection sheet three and the final dissection sheet um, I am going to try to get a pregnant cat so stay tuned <laughs>